distance draw is a little bit different than what you grew up with because you're working and it's a crucial part of the season. But uh, we had a great time, just the three of us, and now I look forward to Sunday's game. Kirk, in a big game like this, what's your thought process like? Is there something different that is required of a quarterback in a game like this or are you just trying to treat it like any other game, even if the stakes are as high as they are? I think you're aware of what's at stake. You're aware of what winning the game, you know, leaving the field will feel like. But at the same time, um, you know, we've done this now uh, 15 times this season, and um, you know, it shouldn't be a whole lot different from the actual football of when we played them the first time in Chicago in terms of, you know, that was a big game as well, a lot of energy and a very good defense. And, you know, this one will be no different. You feel like playing them um, early in November gives you some insights this week that you may get from playing them in a defense setting? You know, I mean, this is a divisional opponent, so this is anything new. We play, you know, three teams twice a year, every year. And, um, you know, we play the Lions and Packers second time and, and, in some sense, yeah, you have film against them. You have been out there before, but at the other side, they do too. And you just got to go play and, and to see how it shakes out. Pretty rough three quarters of offense that first meeting. What did you find in the fourth quarter or see any film now that really helped you boost your team? Well, we had two, uh, three turnovers. Um, you know, we didn't do well on third down. And, uh, you know, they did a good job condensing the pocket. And we'll have to you know, do the best we can to hold up and, and um, you know, protect the football and run the football, and you know all those things that we talk about really every single week that are important to winning are important in this game. And we didn't do as well uh, against them the first time, and that's why we didn't win. Do you feel like the run game and the philosophy, the execution, is in a better place now than the other games? Uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, we've we've run the football more often the last couple of weeks, and. Um, it, things can change week to week based on the defense we're playing, the situations we get caught in in the game, and uh, what we think is going to work. But um, you know, the last two weeks, I think we've, we've, as far as just the general attempts wise, we've run the ball more. And um, when you do that, that usually then leads to, you know, more production. And if you have a lead like we've had the last couple of games in the second half, then you're going to get more attempts naturally, and it's going to, you know, lend itself to to having a better run game. Um, again, it's a small sample size, but. I think you can look at the production and say, yeah, it's been a little different the last couple of weeks. Kirk, anything you can take away personally from the season finale two years ago? The Redskins, you were kind of in a similar spot against the Giants. They locked up a bird. You at home had to win, and then you weren't able to. Anything you can gain from that game or take away? I remember the feeling driving away from the game. I remember being disappointed. I don't want to feel that again. Um, you know, it's not complicated. I want to win. We want to win. We understand what's at stake. There's no magic formula. There's no button you can push or hours you can put in to suddenly snap your fingers and guarantee a win. So you do all you can, give everything you have. Uh, there have been plenty of games this year where I've given everything I have and we don't come out on top and I don't have a great game. But there have also been plenty of games where I do that exact same process and it's more than good enough and I play at a very high level and we play at a very high level. So um, you just have to you know, be the best team that night. Well, there will always be, you know, excitement, nerves, anxiety, butterflies, whatever you want to call it. It'll always be there. You know, this matters to me. I joke with people that when the math teacher, junior high school, said, hey, we've got a pop quiz. I mean, you start to feel the butterflies because you want to do well. It matters to you. And frankly, I think when I have butterflies, I play a little better because it, it heightens your your awareness and your uh, your attention to detail and your sense of urgency. So, um, you know, I, I, I've always felt that when I step on a field, regardless of the game, and those will be there again Sunday afternoon. And um, that's okay. That's part of the deal. Um, but certainly being, like you said, in the, my seventh year, having started you know, a handful of games in this league, um, you can draw on those experiences and say, I've been in these moments before and um, you know, I understand what's required of me. And, and it's a team game. You know, we talked today about how this is not a, a defense that we're going against that teams are putting 50 points up against having 500 yards of offense. And that may not be the game that's required to win. You know, if our defense and special teams play really well, who knows if offensively, you know, we, we don't have the most dynamic day, but we come out with a win, then that's what we do. That's what's required to win. So all we want to do is win as a team. And sometimes we can get caught up in we want to win as a passing game or win as an offense. And as long as we win as a team, we don't really care how it's done. Kirk, what is the biggest advantage you found for a player you have had today? The biggest advantage? Well, anytime you, you, you know, are around what's familiar, 
Um, you're not dealing with communication issues with noise. Um, you know, you're just in a, an environment that is behind you. You can feed off that crowd's energy. I think our, our team feeds off the crowd and what they bring. And um, it's just a great place to play an NFL football game. And I can't say enough good things about the venue, the locker room, the facility, and, and the way our fans, uh, you know, spur us on. So, um, you know, certainly glad that our final game is at home. And, and hopefully, you know, well, I'm just glad it gives us a chance here at home to be able to, uh, you know, finish the right way. Well, you know, I think what's funny is like Rudy has nine catches and 100 and whatever yards and two touchdowns. And then it's, well, how does Adam get the ball? And then if Adam has 800 yard games, it's, well, where, what's Rudy doing? And what about Dalvin? And so I feel like there's only one football, there's only 50 to 80 plays, and we're going to do the best we can. But if Dalvin has a hot hand, let's get him the ball. If Rudy has a hot hand, let's get him the ball. If Adam Diggsy, I, I don't care who it is, I don't care if we never throw it. But uh, as long as we're winning and productive as an offense, you know, I don't really feel a need to go find ways to get Adam the ball just to check the box and say, okay, Adam got touches, so now we're all happy. It's, it's all about winning. And, um, you know, shoot, if I don't touch the ball, that's fine. Motion me out, let's go Wildcat. I don't, I don't need to touch the ball, I just want to win. So that's really where my focus is. I don't really care who gets it or how many times. Um, you know, he, he's just – He's done a really good job. It's not easy to step in at, at, a, at any position, but at the tackle position especially, I think it's a big jump from the college game, the NFL game, in terms of the pass rushers you face and the, what we ask of NFL tackles as opposed to college tackles in terms of the drop back game and the number of times we throw it. And um, you know, It's not easy. And, and again, he'll be the first one to tell you that, hey, there's room for improvement. And he's going to continue to get better. He's, it's still, he's still a young player. But um, you know, I think he's done a good job of, of handling what's been thrown at him and the number of snaps he's played this year. I don't know that any of us expected him to play as much as he has, but um, he sort of earned that right early in the season. And, and um, you know, it's encouraging to have a guy like that who's playing with confidence and, and uh, we're throwing a lot at him and he's responding. What kind of communication did you have with Kevin there in the first quarter of the Lions game? It was kind of his first test and he didn't seem to be freaked out by it. Um, I mean, it, Again, I think I said it after the game on Sunday. You know, when a series ends, it the sky isn't falling. Okay, so you know if we talk about what what happened, why we didn't convert, but at the end of the day, if it's things that we can control, if it's something that's out of our control, then we'll just shrug our shoulders and say, okay, let's wait. Hopefully, our defense gets us the ball back soon, and and we'll have another crack at it. And it's a long game. Um, you know, many times avoiding critical errors, you know, and and just punting can still be a win if you're giving them, you know, back. Uh, without great field position, or if you're able to flip the field a little bit, you know, it's okay. So you play for the long game and, and play to be there at the end. And um, you, know, you certainly, we all know that it's a long game and, and may not be perfect right away. Does the um, Hail Mary to Kyle, does have a certain name in the, the playbook? I know Diggs is the seven heaven. There's nothing magical to it. Um, I think it's Hail Mary. I think, you know, that we say the formation and, and might have another play a tag to it, but it's, it's I think, Hail Mary, yeah. Have you enjoyed watching it on uh, tape the last few days? Or you... Oh, well, I didn't sit at my house on Christmas on a reel and have it <laughs> replaying over and over. But, uh, yeah, I watched it a couple of times, and we talked about it and just, you know, said good job and moved on to the next one. Kirk, uh, Monday was Mike Smith talking about how he's been impressed by the resilience of this team throughout the year. Can you, can you speak to that as well? You know, uh, I just think every team faces adversity. Nobody's immune to it. You know you're going to face it when you're standing here in August talking about the upcoming season. And, um, you know, I'm sure there are teams that could say they face more than we have. But, uh, you know, through the course of a season, it's going to be up and down. And there's going to be people taking shots at you and criticizing you. And you just kind of shrug your shoulders and move through it, try to block out the noise and just go play. And you're going to have injuries. You're going to have, uh, you know, in-game setbacks. and. Um, that's kind of life, and that's the way it is in this league. And hopefully, you know, we continue to show resiliency here in Week 17, and that'll give us the opportunity then to keep playing. Kirk, as you guys look to run the ball a little bit better in the last month, do you notice any effect that's had on defense that they've been facing? Um, I think you'd have to ask them. I, I think, uh, you know, they're going to have to stop the run if, if you're running the ball well. Um, again, we, I think we said it several times that if you're, 
running the ball but not doing it well, you're wasting plays. You know, now you're handcuffing yourself and you're basically trying to beat a defense with less plays to do it with. So uh, when you run it well, now there's something they have to focus on. And that, in theory, should open up you know, play action opportunities and maybe it slows the pass rush down a little bit. I don't know that you could point to any specific play where it's done that, but certainly something that they have to worry about then and focus on. And the defense's calls, you know, I think the, the, the coverage plan is going to have to be you know, built in to stop the run if you're running well, and that should open up you know, more people on the outside to get open. They can't double receivers quite as much if they're worried about stopping the run. And um, so, you know, the more you can run, the more it may open up other opportunities. But vice versa, if you're throwing the ball well, you might get a lot of two safety looks or safeties who are doubling receivers. And now that should open up opportunities for your run game to, to pop a run here or there. Last couple for Kirk. All right, thanks, guys.